installment weekly newscast um first one in a long time as you guys know i haven't been broadcasting for a while and no you are not listening to an archived live show this is the warm-up we've got to test the pc we've got to wait a couple weeks till the audio servers are ready and hey i promised you guys mayhem and madness months ago and i'm behind schedule so let's get into it like we will always do first of all by going back into time this day this time we're going to go back to 1836 sam houston was elected as president of the republic of texas which earned its independence from mexico in a successful military rebellion uh moving along first topic crumbling economy as of the writing of this post which was about an hour ago every one of you owe fifty seven thousand one hundred and thirty three dollars to cover your share of the national debt and yes that means even you baby fresh out of the womb moving on to the next category which used to be obama bullshit but thankfully enough he's out of there soon we don't know which one of those puppets you're going to put in next, so we're just retitling this category from here out. I, I don't care who gets elected. It will remain presidential poop. This post from the Homeland Security Newswire, the Obama administration had won a major victory yesterday. Uh, that would have been Wednesday a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, when Senator Barbara Molusky, Kaluski, I butchered it. She's from Maryland. Democrat announced she would support nuclear agreement reach between the P5 plus 1 and Iran. What the hell is that anyway? A P5 plus 1. Okay, anyway, uh, she's the 34th Democrat supporting the accord, thus giving the administration enough votes to sustain a presidential veto of a Senate vote of disapproval. It takes 67 senators to override a presidential veto. But 34 Democrats are now supporting the accord. Opponents of the agreement can no longer reach the required veto overriding number. It is also not clear that there will be a vote of disapproval in the Senate. To have a vote of disapproval brought to the floor, 54 Senate Republicans must persuade six Democrats to support cloucher. That is, a motion to bring debate to an end so a vote can take place. You know what? I don't care. They're just going to do whatever they're pre-programmed to do, and we're going to move along to the next topic, which is revolution news and activism. Uh, and remember, post uh, folks, if you have any um, news that you want to hear on Mayhem and Madness under one of these categories, you can always email it to me, master of many things at yahoo.com. Let's get into it. This from the blaze. A random man who approached microphones uh, that were set up for a Friday afternoon press conference to address the arrest of Rowan County Kirk Kim Davis warned members of the media that destruction is coming to on America. The man who was carrying Bible-themed signage and a flagpole while donning a long beard and cowboy hat delivered an impromptu address about sin and the law just minutes before attorneys for Davis were scheduled to address her arrest. Uh, standing before the audience of journalists. He shared long-ranging views uh, on religion, loneliness on the streets, and tyranny. Well, I don't know about the religion, but I can't disagree with that. Destruction is coming on America. It's been here for a while. Uh, maybe he has dementia. Moving along, September 16th, Salem, Oregon, will see the Unchiwana Fisher people against Nestle, along with masked and unmasked activists, when they converge on the State House in an effort to uphold a treaty signed in the 1800s giving the Fisher tribe rights to the land around Cascade Locks. The tribe's 1855 treaty with the United States government established reservation boundaries and granted rights to tribal members to harvest fish and game from lands outside of those boundaries. The combined group seek not only to protect the indigenous people and their rights, but also to 
protect Oregon from the corporate influence and environmental consequences of the Nestle Corp. The gathering begins at 10 a.m. and goes until 5 p.m. At uh, 2 p.m., 12 to 2 p.m., rather, speakers will be present along with the media. Moving along to our warring world, this from the Homeland Security Newswire. Lost generation, wars prevent 13 million children in the Middle East, North Africa, from going to school. The UN's Children's Fund, in a report issued earlier in the week on Thursday, said that conflicts across the Middle East and North Africa have been preventing more than 13 million children from attending school, undermining their hopes for a better future. That's what we do here. I'm sorry. Back to the post. The UNICEF report, Education Under Fire, examined the impact of violence and war on school children in nine countries and territories, including Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and Libya, where an entire general generation is growing up outside of the education system. It's no coincidence that what we see in terms of TV pictures, the tragic pictures of people crossing on boats to Greece and Italy, very much comes back to the Syrian conflict and to the Iraqi conflict to a lesser extent. UNICEF's regional director, Peter Salama, said, refugees who try to get into EU countries often say that educating their children is one of the main reasons for why they have left home countries in a perilous journey. Hey, you know, if they hang out a little longer, uh, less of them will need school because we'll probably drop bombs on them. Moving along to the next headline, or next topic, rather, which is slow genocide. This from PR Newswire. Science continues to report the potential for significant adverse effects from the obsolete practice of water fluoridation. That report from the Fluoride Action Network. In June, a major review reported that the majority of studies that underpin the rationale for community water fluoridation have been of poor quality. Oh, that's to say the least. Good Lord. Yet the Centers for Disease Control and Organized Dentistry will promote legislative and legal strategies to protect and promote water fluoridation. Uh, clearly, we are creating a PR stunt hoping to revitalize this Orwellian practice that goes against every principle of modern pharmacology. They are protecting fluoridation policy, reputations, and jobs, not the American public, says Paul Conant, Ph.D., fan executive director. Fluoride chemicals added to public water supplies are toxin-laced industrial waste products, hydrofluorosilic acid, never safely tested in humans or animals. Uh, fluoride chemicals added to public water supply... Oh, excuse me. Got behind myself. January fan explained why fluoridation has... Uh, failed concept. Since then, the following occurred. U.S. study links fluoridation to ADHD, a U.K. study linking fluoridation to thyroid disease. Uh, U.K. Cochrane Group could find no quality research proving fluoridation reduces tooth decay. Another study had been published that links fluoride to lower IQ in children. For a new total of 44 studies, Researchers uncovered evidence that the sugar industry colluded with the National Institute of Health in the 1960s and 70s to turn attention away from sugar, a proven cause of tooth decay, in favor of an other unproven approaches, including fluoride. Sheehan and James report in the Journal of Dental Research 2015 that fluoride hasn't stopped sugar-caused tooth decay. They write previous preventive measures have clearly failed. You know, and, it, and if you don't think the fluoride is dumbing you down, um, ask yourself right now, why do I still get cavities? Okay, moving along. Let's, let's get out of this because uh, we know it's killing you. It's killing you slowly. It's slow genocide, and you're killing the rest of the planet. And the next topic is just that, toxic planet. This from Homeland Security Newswire. Nearly 1,000 Chinese chemical plants to relocate in the wake of the Tianjin explosions. Local governments across China have submitted plans to relocate or upgrade about 1,000 chemical plants in the wake of the massive explosions in Tianjin earlier this month, which killed 147 people. Wait till we get to the uh, Earth news, because it may be too late to do any of that. But anyway, uh, the blast at the warehouse in which large quantities of chemicals were stored was China's worst industrial accident in recent years. Criticism was, uh, and now, well, I, I, I don't, well, China, okay, 
Yeah, maybe. They're they're an industrial accident anyway. I mean, you can't even go outside without a mask on or you're going to get a disease or some sickness. Uh, anyway, Mia Wei, China's industry minister, said local governments are moving in a more determined fashion to relocate and upgrade the chemical plants. Uh, and then they give you a bunch of rhetoric, yada, yada, yada. This from ENE News. Uh, animals delirious, disorientated, up and down the West Coast, displaying unprecedented behaviors. Expert know something isn't right. Uh, the government reporting waters offshore are so lacking in things like anchovies, sardines, and squids. My breakdown, simplistic, the Pacific Ocean is dying. Moving along, news about our contorting Earth. Earthquakes rock areas in France, Russia, and Japan. This is from theguardianlv.com. There's been a shifting of tectonic plates across the globe today, triggering an earthquake that rocked areas in France, Russia, and Japan. Russia had a 5.9 earthquake rumble all the way to Tokyo, Japan, which is 1,240 miles away. The depth of the quake was 47 meters. Less than 45 minutes later, a magnitude 4.9 earthquake hit the same area with a depth up to 60 meters. Crack got deeper, what can I say? No injuries or damage to report, even though it went through 67 phases. Uh, mag magnitude 5.3 hit uh, 86 kilometers northeast of Amsterdam Island in France. The quake shook waters as thus far as 1,712 miles away. The quake happened near New Amsterdam Fracture Zone. In Atka, Alaska has been experienced several earthquakes. Quakes range in magnitude from 3.8 to 5.6. There have been 26 earthquakes in Atka since 6.10 a.m., all the earthquakes happened in the ocean, so there were no injuries or damage reported. Some speculate that there is a lunar eclipse coming, and the phases of the moon have had an effect on earthquake. In the United States, uh, sizable, notable earthquakes, a 4.01 kilometer north of Piedmont, California, on the 17th of August, a 6.6, .6, 214 kilometers west of uh, Lada, Solomon Islands, that was on the 15th of August. 6.4, uh, 180 kilometers southeast of Gizo, Solomon Islands. That was on the 12th. And a 6.6 .6 occurred on August 10th, which was 179 kilometers southwest of Dadley, also in the Solomon Islands. And as far as anything below a 4.0, too many to even count or bore you with. Go to the USGS site and check it out for yourself. Moving along... A uh, little bit of space news, this from spaceweather.com. There's been a filament eruption in a possible Earth-directed CME. A magnetic filament snaking across the sun's southern hemisphere erupted during the late hours of September 4th, and it may have hurled a CME towards Earth. The CME is not heading directly for Earth, but it could deliver a glancing blow to our planet's magnetic sphere on September 7th. NOAA forecasters are still modeling the event to refine their forecast. So maybe you'll get some lights in the sky, but it's probably not going to... You don't need to run to the Faraday cage just yet. Okay, folks? Moving along, next category, humans losing their minds. Uh, a Whole Foods... This from Mashable, by the way. A Whole Foods security guard in Oakland, California, has been permanently removed from all the company stores after a clash that left a customer lying unconscious in a pool of his own blood. The shopper was attempting to buy groceries with an electronic benefit transferred car card uh, that gives food stamps benefits Thursday night when he got into a verbal argument with the cashier. Uh, that was according to a witness who wrote it on Facebook. Oh, good Lord. When the security guard arrived on the scene, the situation escalated. The witness, Zoe Marks, a lecturer at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, wrote, the armed security guard slammed the customer repeatedly against concrete pillars put him in a chokehold, restrained and suffocated, and was thrown face down on the pavement unconscious and proceeded to throw him out of the store, she wrote. Oakland police are investigating the incident as an assault, according to news. You think? It bounced the guy off every pillar in the store, threw him out a fucking window. Ah, uh, excuse me, but it's a little bit more than assault. Uh... 
Next category, we don't have anything in this week. That would be animals on revolt. That's where we're going to regularly report any animal attacks and other craziness from the animal world. Social networking news, nothing worthy of your time this week. The next category, mad science, and I almost don't want to read this to you. It's just disturbing, and I have some questions along the way. This category, mad science, this from Mashable, scientists used a 3D printer to determine the perfect penis size. Yes, you heard it, ladies. A study recently conducted by academic researchers is putting concerns about penis size to bed. No pun intended. The study led by sexual psych, uh, psychologist, psychophysiologist, excuse me, Dr. Nicole Pross used 100 blue plastic 3D printed phalluses in 75 female participants to determine what women are actually looking for when it comes to penis size. I can't even believe I'm reading this to you people. 75 females don't get enough sex that they have to go ride plastic parts, spit out of a printer, just so that you'll know what you're looking for. Listen, you're not going to know what you're looking for until you pull his pants down. Okay, now i got to move along. I can't even finish the post. That was at Mashable. Go read it for yourself. Good Lord. Moving along to cannabis and hemp news. This from Normal Marijuana Genetics, often mislabeled. Strains of cannabis, sativa and cannabis indica, possess relatively few significant genetic differences and are often mislabeled by breeders according to an evaluation of marijuana toxinomy published online last week in the journal plus one investigators from the university of manitoba the university of british columbia and dalhousie university in nova scotia evaluated the genetic structure of a diverse range of commonly cultivated marijuana and industrial hemp samples Researchers reported we found a moderate correlation between the genetic structure of marijuana strains and their reported sativa and indica ancestry and show that marijuana strains' names often do not reflect a meaning, meaningful genetic identity. They added this observation suggests that sativa and indica may represent distinguishable pools of genetic diversity, but that breeding has resulted in considerable admixture between the two. Our results suggest that the reported ancestry of some most common marijuana strains only partially captures their true ancestry. So, yeah, we've eliminated a strain of pot, basically. It's all one big strain now, I guess. That's it. Um, next post from Normal Florida Cities moving full speed ahead with marijuana decriminalization. And this is outstanding. Not necessarily legalization decriminalization. There is a difference. Look it up. Local governments in Florida are taking marijuana law reform into their own hands by adopting marijuana decriminalization ordinances as an alternative to more severe state sanctions. Normal first wrote about the trend in July when Florida's largest county, Miami-Dade, passed an ordinance allowing local law enforcement to treat marijuana possession offenses involving 20 grams or less as a civil infraction punishable by a hundred dollar fine. Hey, it's better than going to jail, but it's still not freedom. Many other communities have followed suit. City commissioners in Miami Beach imposed a similar policy in July. Authorities in Hollandale Beach acted likewise last week. Key West City officials are poised to finalize their similar measure in September, while lawmakers in Palm Beach County are considering taking similar action. Decriminalization is also gaining momentum among lawmakers in the city of St. Petersburg. These changes to local laws are especially significant in Florida, where state lawmakers have failed to even consider amending its archaic and overly punitive marijuana policies. Consequently, Florida possesses the third highest annual marijuana possession arrest total, roughly 60,000 arrests per year. Um, good Lord. But um, hopefully that's going to change soon. Everybody should get on board with this. Please support Normal and all their efforts. They've been working real hard for a long time. And another website you should support, uh, mpp.org, Marijuana Policy Project. They have just released their top 50 most influential marijuana consumers. And I'm going to read every 
50 of these people uh, because they need to be called out, and it's quite interesting. First on the list, Barack Obama. Second, uh, 2016 presidential hopefuls, every one of them, outstanding. Third, Oprah Winfrey. Four, Bill Clinton. Five, John Kerry, Stephen Colbert, Clarence Thomas, Kate Perry, LeBron James, Jay-Z, Bill Gates, George Soros, John Stewart, Bill Maher, Rush Limbaugh, Andrew Como, Sanjay Gupta, George Bush, George W. Bush, Seth MacFarlane, George Clooney, Lady Gaga, Ted Turner, Brad Pitt, uh, Rihanna, Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg down at 25, I gotta give, uh, you know, I think Whoopi should be up there around 10, but who am I to judge? 26, Morgan Freeman, Angelina Jolie, Conan O'Brien, Martha Stewart, I told you, I knew it, um, anyway, Governor John Hickenlopper of Colorado, Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts, Tom Brokaw, that's interesting, Michael Bloomberg, Justin Timberlake. You know what? I don't really care what Justin Timberlake is doing. Uh, 35, Aaron Sorkin. Glenn Beck is at 36. Al Gore all the way down to 37. I think he smokes more than the rest of them, tell you the truth. 38, Matt Damon. 39, Susan Sarandon. 40, Madonna. Madonna will do anything. She doesn't count. 41, Robert Downey Jr. 42, Phil Jackson. 43, Rick Steves. 44 is Jennifer Lawrence, 45 Miley Cyrus, the whore, 46 Jennifer Aniston, 47 Matthew McConaughey, 48 Snoop Dogg, uh, 49 Hugh Hefner, 50 Maureen Dodd, Snoop Dogg, 48th most influential, well, I bet Snoop is going to have something to say about that when he hears this broadcast, isn't he? Moving along. To the last but not least, the ever lulzical Hacker News. This from Hack Read. A genius teenager was planning to throw a party, maybe at his home, we don't know. But it's usually hard to convince your parents in agreeing with something you're planning to do. So he went out of the way and opted for a smarter way by hacking into his parents' mobile phones. Reddit user Nashole, whose real name, according to provided screenshot, is Brendan. And seems like he does have a better understanding about the technology, so he deceived his parents using his technological skills into allowing him to throw a party by pulling a simple but remarkable iPhone prank on them. Basically, he added a shortcut on his mother's as well as his father's iPhone. Now, whenever his father types the word no, the shortcut will automatically change it to a predefined phrase, where the bitch is at. And for his mother, the word no would be changed... Uh, to hell yes. Once everything was set up properly, he then sent a text message to them asking, Hey guys, can I throw a party tomorrow night? And now you can imagine what his parents' response was. He does post a dreamlike outcome on a screenshot over on Reddit. You can look for that. And then the next headline up, and this is kind of scary for parents, uh, newborns, watch out for pedophiles, nine internet-connected baby cams can be hacked. Security researchers recently got a hold of nine internet-connected baby monitors with a video capability and found that all nine of them have some major security vulnerabilities that could be exploited to gain access to the monitor. The devices tested by the security researchers were not manufactured by some unfamiliar or infamous brands, but they were mass-produced by some of the most widely available and trustworthy brands, including Philips, TrendNet, Wi-Fi Baby, uh, Withing, and several others. Even if you're tech-savvy and had taken all the precautionary steps while setting up the system, the baby monitor still could be hacked because of all these devices are based on a Linux operating system. Hackers can exploit the found vulnerabilities and abuse these monitors to carry out powerful attacks. All nine of the below-mentioned baby monitors are easily available on online stores, and most of the users opt to purchase these devices, which is why researchers base their study on those products. And uh, so you can go over there to HackRead and uh, check that out, HackRead.com, if uh, you've got a baby monitor and you want to see if it's on the list. And then the last post of the day, and to wrap up the last... Uh, 
the show for the first mayhem and madness. One terabyte of passwords stolen. This from HackCoder. The anonymous hacker group claims they have stolen one terabyte of data from Best Union, a European company that manages online ticketing for the Expo 2015 Universal Exposition Festival in Milan, Italy. The anonymous Italy posted on Twitter, uh, which is a translated version, with the below image. Here's to those who rely on the security of virtual hashtag expo at best union. You have been hacked by hashtag up Italy hashtag no expo. And I think that is just outstanding. Much love. Many thanks for your time. Remember sharing the video supports my efforts. Visit the website. There'll be a link below about two weeks. So one more Hacker News on Archive Only, and then we should be live. Much love to you all, and I'll see you. Put your body upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop, and you've got to win the